I do want to see the holy fuck. This is 51 minutes long. What's up, you little freaks? Show? Welcome back to this place, aka my channel, aka the Noah Sampson channel. So recently I made a video on a street interview channel that I thought was a bit odd. The video was called Incel Street Interviews, and in it I talked about how a lot of the questions they asked in these interviews were loaded, narrative-based, and how the community that these videos have fostered is not exactly a great place to be if you're a lady, or if you're a man for that matter, or anyone, because of the way that it fosters misogynistic rhetoric. In my video, I played some clips of a YouTuber called Sneeko reacting to this interview channel when I was introducing the general response to this content from the Manosphere. And this very same Sneeko ended up stumbling upon my video while he was live streaming and he reacted to it. For those who don't know, Sneeko is a YouTuber who, until recently, was most known for his street interview style content. These videos are from his main channel, with 1.2 million subscribers, and he's been uploading on there for almost 10 years. But recently, he started a when Tate are based as fuck, said the 14 year old chatter. On God, you are never gonna get pussy if you truly believe that, I promise you. Please, stop it right now. If you're if your main goal, I'm, I'm speaking to you right now, I'm communicating to you right now, I promise you, bro. I promise you, you are never going to get pussy. Do not do this, okay? Do not do this. These motherfuckers are hurting you like little sheep. You are going to be permanently bitchless, okay? You are permanently stuck in, in bitchless territory. Do you understand? You are never getting pussy, bro. Even fucking Jake Paul knows. Even Jake Paul, he sucks. And even he knows you are permanently stuck in virgin territory if you fucking think that these guys are based. Okay? Straight up. Don't do that. Old Sneeko video, please at least read title. What the fuck? Should the U.S. intervene in Syria? Black Ops 2 commentary? They just have to stop it by bringing in the United Nations peacemakers. And they had to take him out because it was just way too dangerous and violent for them to even be able to have an effect in Syria. And so basically that's it. It's been going on for a long time. But since March of 2011, it's becoming a huge issue. And what I'm trying to discuss is whether it's, it's the United States should intervene in Syria. And the people who are saying yes do have a good argument. It's it's for a good, um, it's for a good cause, and it's because I'm not. What I'm saying, I'm I'm refuting the statement. I'm refuting this and saying that the United States should not get involved in Syria. What I'm not refuting is the fact that Al Assad's government is very corrupt and it should be stopped. What I'm trying to argue is that the U.S. has always gotten involved in issues that has nothing to do with itself. Think of the Vietnam War. Think of all the communism, the, all the wars that started from communism in the past 100 years that the U.S. has started. The U.S. should, by, by no means, the U.S. has already invested $700 million into Syria. That's already enough. We should not have to send in troops. That's, that's their issue. I know that. What happened? So fucking based at like the age of 10. Like what, what happened? I, I don't know how old he is, but. He was like a based isolationist king. Like he was like, he was out here playing Allah Surya Bashar. And then now he's like, now he's like fucking, I mean, I guess it's because he's just doing the, he's just trying to make money, really. That's what it is. Remember when this was going on and Rogan was like the biggest anti-war military industrial complex guy? Yeah, no, this is him. This is the same guy. He grew up and learned how smarter he is than leftists. Yeah, he's just fucking based and so smart. No, this isn't Logan Paul. It's uh, Nico. This dude who's like constantly saying that I should debate him, but I'm afraid of him or something, but I don't really think about him at all. Ah. <sighs> I've, I've watched some of his videos. He's been in the chat before. Um,
the second channel called Schneeko, where he does more live stream react style content. This channel has gained 400 of its 500,000 subscribers in the last 30 days, so it's growing quite rapidly. I think this is partly due to his presence on TikTok, where his clips go viral fairly often. But more consequentially, this rise is correlated with Sneeko's seeming adherence to Manosphere rhetoric, with much of the content having red pill, conservative, or anti-feminist themes. It was on the second channel that Sneeko reacted to my video while streaming and uploaded a cut down version of this stream to the channel yesterday as a standalone video titled Sneeko Haters Are Creepy White Knights. This, this is, is actually Sneeko had Fuentes on mentioned House and Abby, then shits get extremely anti Semitic while Gideon laughs. What the fuck? Dude, I am not touching that. The fucking 10 foot pole. I know. I am familiar. I'm aware. There is probably nothing worse than you can do than like put a fucking white supremacist, like an actual Nazi, on a large platform. And some dumb motherfuckers are doing that. Okay? Some dumb motherfuckers are doing that right now, and they're dumb as fuck for it. Okay? They do not understand how fucking dumb they are for it. They think that shit's fun. Okay? They think that shit's fun. They think that is, like, okay or whatever. We're, like, going back to the fucking 2015 era. Dumb Gamergate politics. It's really, really fucked up. It's really, really stupid. And, uh, okay. Gee, a very good point. I am Sneeko's number one creepiest hater. But Sneeko's response to my video was interesting. It was fun, okay? So I thought I'd take the opportunity to go through it and answer some of his questions and respond to some of the things that he says and see if we can all take something of value away from this. I'm going to be responding to most of his video, minus the parts where he repeats himself. So this video might end up being a bit long, but I think it could be worth it. And if you don't feel like sticking around for it, that is totally fine. Leave a like on the way out as a treat. Listen, if a Nazi doesn't have like a big audience and you have a much larger, you have a much larger audience than him. Okay. A much larger audience than him and like fans that are coming to watch you. I've made that mistake before in the past and it was really fucked up. Don't make that mistake. I didn't personally make that mistake. Um, but I, I did play a role in it in the past. Don't do it. There's no reason to do it. Let them fucking, let them straight up fucking die out. Okay. There's no reason to offer additional platforms to Nazis. They have nothing good to say. Not have to hear out their ideas. No reason. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about the train wrecks thing. Exactly. Where Nick Fuentes jumped last second on that. And it was not good. And for a lot of people, especially a lot of people on the internet, especially a lot of white kids, like, they don't really think about it from the perspective of, like, how harmful this might be generations because it doesn't, like, directly impact their existence. You know what I mean? They just, they can just look at the, the merits of debate they can separate the art from the artist, if you will. You know? That's not... You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. That's not a good thing to do. Okay? Remember when CNN just brought Richard Spencer on to talk about his white supremacy movement in a nonchalant way? I do remember. 2016 was a weird time. I thought we had moved on from said weird time. Okay? Okay? If you feel like doing that. Okay, without further ado, let's watch. I'm bored already. This guy sucks. But there's another one of these. And he went on my boy, this fucking soy boy, Noah Sampson. Went on my boy, uh, it's complicated, calling it incel street interviews. Whenever a man calls another man an incel, red flag. So Sneeko here says that it's a red flag when men call other men incels. But that raises the question, what if they're being incels? Or doing- Notice how I said don't platform this shit, and then like- 36 month subscribers immediately were like, here, let me send you the link. Hey, if you, hey, hey, are you a 36 month subscriber in the Hasanabi broadcast? Is there a little voice in the back of your head that says, oh, well, Hassan just said, don't platform this video. So what I will do is exactly the opposite of what he just said by sending you links to that video. If there's a voice like that in the back of your head, don't listen to that voice. Do the exact opposite of that voice. You will get banned. Okay? Your 36-year-old man 
and you're a 36 year old, uh, 36 month old sub. Be smarter. Be an adult. Think critically. Okay. Stop linking shit. Stop doing that. You're fucking stupid. Let's continue. Doing incel shit. We just aren't supposed to say anything because we're men? That doesn't sound like a great plan because if the onus is on women to call out this kind of behavior, why would men that actively avoid talking about it amongst themselves ever choose to believe them. Also, he does some name calling. He calls me a name here. Uh, he calls me a soy boy. For the uninitiated, soy boy is a sort of derogatory term for a weak man. Urban Dictionary defines soy boy as being an effeminate male whose feelings get hurt far too often, usually resulting in some kind of pitiful retort or changing of the subject. And I must admit, he's he's got me there, okay? I am effeminate. I'm soft. I'm emotional, all right? I have a floral backdrop wallpaper in my room. I brush my teeth and I floss and I wash my ass. And I am sensitive, okay? I'll dip my toe into a la-la land and keep it in there until I'm crying. My feelings get hurt so often that they have visible scars on them. But I have no idea how Sneeko could possibly know any of this about me, given that we are 0, 0.0 seconds into- Literally yesterday watching a video where Jordan Clipper big times a streamer, maybe I should be nicer to my chat. Yeah, uh, I think this is not, you know, maybe take a day off because you didn't understand the overarching message of like not platforming Nazis, and then long-term community subs literally doing exactly that while I was in the process of describing why that's damaging to the video. But maybe he's a psychic. Let's find out. Let's see this fucking soy boy say something different. Yeah, whatever. Check out my cat. Check out my cat. I'm a grown man with a mustache. How old are you, bro? I'm 24. Um, throughout this response, he suggests that I'm 30, 34, and other different ages that I'm not, but I'm 24, which is actually right around his age, I believe. Sneeko is 23, uh, almost 24, according to Google.com's website, Google. But also here, he says that I'm a grown man with a mustache as like an insult, like grown men aren't supposed to have mustaches or something, as opposed to children. <laughs> Flossing in your room alone. This should be a red flag. This dude looks like 34. You shouldn't like... Check out my cat. Check out my cat. Oh, he's nice and safe. I feel comfortable with him. This soy boy is a safe space. Glad. I think one of the funniest parts about this kind of rhetoric, this kind of commentary, is that like, not even trying hard. He's just like, it just feels like, what is it called? Mad libs or whatever? Where he's just like throwing random words out there that you know people are going to respond to. Uh, soy boy, uh, safe space. I bet you're a safe space. You're fucking feminine, dude. You're feminine safe space. I got you. Damn. Fucking own, dude. Bro, just say he's gay and move on. You literally don't have to fucking, like, dance around it. You, you just say the F word. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, the safe space. Women are safe around you, implying that, like, that's a... Why is there a negative association with, like, women assuming that you're a safe person? Like, oh, man, I fucking own this guy when I said he doesn't feel like a rapist. <laughs> Just say slurs, pussy. Glad to hear that, Sneeko. I do like to keep things comfortable for everybody, so that's good. On the Noah Sampson channel, we pride ourselves on having the softest, cushiest, fattest, wettest, juiciest, grippiest echo chamber on the platform. Mabito. Her name's Ma Bro, if you make an Instagram for your cat, just like reevaluate your life. I'm sorry for the people who have Instagrams with cats, but like if you're a grown man with a mustache, you should not make a cat for your fucking Instagram for your cat. So I'm not really sure what his problem is with me making an Instagram for my cat, Babe. I made it mostly just because it's an easy way to keep my friends and family up to date on all the latest Babe news and events. A one-stop shop, if you will. And I know folks in the audience, you know, some of you are fans of that small furry animal critter. So yeah, it seems like I'm just weird. What? My rebuttal? I got nothing on that. Yeah. Don't make an Instagram for your cat. I guess. I mean, I don't really give a shit one way or the other. I'm not even going to make a joke about that. Weird thing to get hung up on, but okay. <laughs> Instagram is for cat. Goes Bobby. Not to, bro, no one gives a fuck about your cat. I, I do. Okay. I like her. Okay. This part is boring. All right. Come on. Come on. I don't care about your cat either. Cat. He was not, in fact, seem like. like <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. Babe, you hear that? He wants to eat you for cat. Wait, what? Okay. Well, Thank you for clear to put cooking. Huge fan. Yeah, I didn't mean I was gonna eat his cat. I meant I want to like literally. Wait, put what? 
Okay, I was wrong. I'm going right back into it. That's actually not boring. Art gets really, really weird. He starts telling me that he wants to eat my cat. Like, eat babe. That. This cat. Trigger warning. Cat eating rhetoric. I want to eat your cat, bro. I want some Asian shit. Hey, everyone. Today... Okay. Bro, he said awesome Asian shit. That I want to eat your cat, bro. Awesome Asian shit, dude. That's funny. There's nothing more fucking alpha than being like, my race, as perceived by white people, is cat eaters. And I'm going to fucking lean into that. You know what I mean? No, he is Asian. He is. He's half Asian. He's just like, once again, can't actually fucking make jokes. You got to do the hackiest bits possible. Got to do the hackiest bits possible. Asian viewership. Wait, what? What the fuck? I'm not saying that. I'm saying he's doing that. He's going to use it. Is this a joke defense? I mean, it is just a joke. It is. I'm not even talking about like, oh man, it's racist. First and foremost, it's Asian. If he wants to make fucking like rude, insensitive jokes about his own race, like, yeah, go ahead. But it's corny as fuck. It's corny as fuck. It's hacky as fuck. And it's also additionally silly because, like, you're not even making racial jokes about Asian people. You're not even making racial jokes about Asian people that's, like, unique, interesting, compelling, that uh, doesn't fucking just, like, literally lower yourself to the lowest barrier just to get a couple fucking ha-has from a bunch of fucking cringe incel white dudes. You are the white man's dog in that point. You're just doing that. That's really silly. That's silly shit. It is. It is. It's fucked up. Bit of a stool humper joke. Oh yeah, no. It's a silly billy. It's a silly billy joke. We're going to be looking at a YouTube, Let me eat your cat. YouTube channel called Like Your Cat, Now Your Night Ayo. He goes on to clarify that when he talked about wanting to eat my cat, he was not, in fact, talking about cunnilingus with me. And I'm pretty sure he's doing this because he doesn't want to seem like gay to his audience or something. Huge fan. Chat, I didn't mean I was going to eat his cat. I meant I want to, like, literally put cook his cat and eat it. Like the cat, right? The one with the Instagram. I want to use it for calories. I should have said that. God damn it. Okay, well. Thank you for clarifying that. Babe, you hear that? He wants to eat you for calories. Oh no. <laughs> Looks like she's about to eat herself for calories. Why do so many women think they have the- It's the same thing I say to some of my friends who only make Jewish jokes about themselves, like stop fucking pandering to them. No, but like, there is a way to be funny when you do that, okay? There's a way to be funny when you do that. Like I, I regularly talk about how I fucking danced on rooftops in New Jersey during 9-11, okay? That's not like, th that didn't literally happen. It's technically fucking racist to say that. Okay, it's technically Islamophobic to say that, but I'm talking about how fucking stupid that of a, of a take that is. Okay, I'm making a joke about it. Okay? You understand? There's a difference between that and being like, Oh, look at me. I am bomb guy. Yalla Habibi. I love exploding myself. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, the, that's what he's doing. He's doing, like, the lowest fucking... Lowest barrier of entry hacky shit. Like, haha, I'm Asian. I like eating animal. I like eating domesticated pets. Is, is just, like, the hackiest thing you can do. You know? You understand? The golden pussy when every woman has one. Huh? So you think that guys want to submit to a woman? Huh? Liberals don't even think you can... You can you just gave haters so much shit to come to in just minutes? Yeah. Ask questions that don't fit their agenda. What's wrong? It's a question on his channel. 
It has to agree with you at every fucking second. So no, the questions don't have to agree with me. As I go on to point out in my video, the problem with the questions that It's Complicated asks isn't that they don't agree with me, it's that they are often loaded, containing assumptions that most people are unlikely to challenge. And the channel uses these things to develop a narrative that modern women are entitled and delusional, which is then lapped up by the audience, by people like Sneeko. This motivation and this narrative why does it feel like every male content creator is trying to piggyback off of Andrew Tate? Because it's, uh, is popping. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, misogyny is popping. Okay. Kind of on the up and up right now, very differently than, uh, past years. But also on top of that, it's, it's super easy. There's an audience of people that are like desperately looking for that. And they're not really smart either. You know what I mean? Cause it's not, they're kind of dumb. And they're just like looking for someone to agree with them. And they feel like they've been cast aside. They feel like uh, no one understands their perspective. And these guys are just like, no, 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 you're right. Society's wrong. You're right for thinking the way you're thinking. Which is, of course, ironic. Um, ironic because society thinks that way as well for the most part. There's an art teacher's pose about freshman boys regurgitating Andrew Tate nonstop. I mean, they're, they're kids. Uh, I think that that's always going to happen. I don't know. Part of me thinks that that's always going to happen. Like, they're kids. You know what I mean? It sucks. And I don't know what the best way to, to change that attitude is. Right? Because the problem is, like, a lot of Hollywood comes across as, like, fabricated. And it is. So, Hollywood's... Uh, uh, Hollywood's like cool uh, influencers and celebrities that are that are crafted are too. They're not rugged enough and they don't translate as authentic enough. For younger kids to like watch and, and kind of look up to and idolize. So they look to like Internet content creators and there's not a lot of Internet content creators out there that are like, hey, that's not cool. You can be cool and not be like a fucking weirdo. I think, I mean, we've talked about this so many times, like people mistake edginess for authenticity on the internet. You know, they just think like the only way that someone can be authentic is if they're like not subscribing to the liberal media, right? And I mean, I don't subscribe to the liberal media narratives or, or the attitudes that liberal media or the best practices that liberal media wants but you know it's just uh it's still much easier to fucking get kids to agree with you if you're corresponding to pre-existing memes about women deserving less um no i'm not gonna fucking segue for the top of the hour ad break but you should subscribe for five dollars or for free because it is the top of the hour and i'm gonna run a fucking six second ad break Okay. Nico was a Nazi. I don't think he is. I think he, do you know what he is? He, for, no, he, he's just a clown. Like he is desperately looking for a place to fit in. And he realized that the Andrew Tate shit, he could just ride it. He'd go on fresh and fit podcast and like keep building an audience. And I think he is building an audience of like, uh, like-minded weird incel reactionaries. Right. Um, I, that's what it is. It's just, he's just desperately trying to, find an avenue for himself. And I think he found one that it's like kind of, kind of sticking. And now he's doing it. I used to watch Nico before he did all this shit, but I stopped when he made a video about how he tried to fuck one of his fans. It's so clear. It's all for crawl out. Yeah. It's definitely 2016 all over again right now. We're in the 2015 part of that era. Yeah, it sucks. Here's the woman ad break now, by the way, I hate that. narrative are both what I disagree with because they hurt everyone. They proliferate hostile potential relationship environments for women and lead men to harbor undue resentment towards what's potential his, uh, partners, what's his which in turn is may hinder their ability to form and maintain lasting, healthy relationships. What's his username? He has a different username on this platform. He's been in here before. I don't know what it is. Um... Bitch? No, I don't think so. 
No, Admin Ross? No, 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 no. No, Aiden Ross does not have like a like a legitimate interest in in trafficking uh, misogynistic takes in the same way that Sneeko has like turned it into his. Um... No, when you say Admin Ross and Sneeko handshake, you're you're failing to comprehend. Aiden Ross only cares about uh, uh, the content and the cloud of it. You know what I mean? He doesn't give a fuck. He, he, if like, if there was a, if there was a person who is as popular as like Andrew Tate is on TikTok and that person was a fucking socialist, Aiden Ross would have him on to be like all glory to the restoration of the, you know, USSR. Uh, he, he would come out as a fucking Maoist and shit. Like he, it's, it's, you know, the impact is still there, but there is a difference between a person who is like very willingly decided, this is my lane, this is my avenue, I'm going to continue down this pipeline, and I'm going to be like as crazy as I possibly can as I build this like media demon around myself versus Aiden Ross who doesn't give a shit about anything uh, and is just basically uh, dick riding, uh, you know, uh, people that already, and he already has his own clout, but uh, dick riding people with like uh, further clout to continue his clout. What is it? This is it. Poggers, sub chat, chat, huh? Fire fighters, Trump 2028. I love white people. Now I'm dead serious. Trump for emperor chat. Dude, your beanie. Glass combo, so dope. 100 emoji. Chat, is it a W stream or FL? He said this back in 2021, 10, 13. Nice. Manosphere is just rice gum. Jake, Logan Paul, agitative content focused on misogyny and red pilling. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Relationships. And I don't want either of those things, you know? I feel like my thesis is pretty well supported by the content of most of these interviews. But even if you disagree, I would love to hear an explanation as to how every single one of these videos' comment sections are riddled with misogynistic attitudes if there wasn't some sort of through line of misogyny on the channel. We will get more into this later, but for now, no, the issue is not as simple as the questions asked in interviews need to agree with me, because as I said, they don't. Okay, so next, Sneeko goes on to sort of speculate about potential ulterior motives that I may have for making the videos that I choose to make. Keep in mind, this is all happening within the first minute and a half of my video. Also be wary, and women, if there's any women watching this, don't you see right through the bullshit? You know that this guy's like, you know, like, hey, look at my cat, I'm a safe soy boy with the safe. This dude's trying to get pussy. But like, yeah, I'm not like those other alpha male triggering guys. Oh my God, those guys are so unsafe. Dude, this is such basic fucking analysis. It blows my mind that this is like still, uh, still seen as like good commentary. First of all, it's just pure projection. Like you're, it's a self-report. You're saying that like this is an act that you put on specific, not because you genuinely believe it or anything, but this is an act that you yourself are putting on for clout or for other some other underlying reason. So you, your expectation is that like other people are authentically into cats, which is weird. Like you could have chosen anything else, but he's like, nah, you're a soy boy because you you have a cat. That's why because you want to be approachable. Like what the fuck? Can't. Can a dude love cats? Like, I mean, I'm not the biggest cat guy, right? You know I'm a dog guy, everybody. His girl got fucked in front of him? What? No. Oh. Wait, what? Really? I feel like I... I wait, did you guys explain this to me in the chat before and I, like, glanced over it? Admit it on a podcast and recommend it. Other people do that? Yeah, I recall it being mentioned here last week or so, bro. I literally... This dude occupies such a little fucking space in my mind that I, I forgot about it. That's his villain origin story. I feel like next time you guys are going to bring this up again and I'm going to fucking forget again. And then I'm going to have the same exact fucking opinion again. What is this? What goes on in the mind of some chatters, dude? 11 month subscriber. What goes on in your mind? You're like, this is a good opportunity for this meme right now. Ha 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 ha. 
come here and let's go on a picnic with my cat. In Sneeko's mind, it seems like the only reason he could see as to why a straight man like myself might want to call out other straight men in a way that I often do on my channel is because I, quote, want to get some pussy. And yes, once again, he has exposed the truth, okay? As you all know, at the end of all my videos, I do display my full real phone number in these bright big letters with a big red arrow and text that says, cute girls, please text me. I am lonely and full of soy. Okay, but jokes aside, um, Sneeko is actually referencing a real thing here. And bear with me. Performative feminism by straight men in order to attract the attention of women is absolutely a thing that happens. You will find True. this talked about in many, if not all, leftist spaces in one way or another. Barack Obama famously read Marx in college in an attempt to get girls. This is a screenshot of where he talks about it from his memoir. 